I'm going to show you how to make this radar using an Arduino. I've used an Arduino Uno myself, but any Arduino will do. I'm using a small servo motor, the SG90. And I'm also using the HCSR04, which is the ultrasonic distance sensor. Finally, I've 3D printed a bracket, which I've got off Thingiverse. I'll post a link in the description. Here I am slicing it before printing it. And that bracket is to attach the ultrasonic distance sensor to the servo motor. So the wiring is quite simple, black to ground, red to 5 volts for the supply. And I'm going to do the same for the ultrasonic sensor here. The ultrasonic sensor can take either 5 or 3.3 volts, so not to worry. Next I'm going to wire the motor signal wire uh, to pin 9, the digital output pin 9. And then we have the trigger pin from the ultrasonic sensor on pin 11. And the echo here seen in yellow on pin 12. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to just implement that in real. So first I'm going to attach the bracket that I printed to the server motor. So this bracket just screws on and then the ultrasonic sensor just fits nice and neatly into it. Next I'm going to wire up the motor, so that's red to 5 volts. Black will be wired to 0 volts or ground. And then orange is the motor signal wire, which we're going to be connecting to pin 9. Next on the ultrasonic sensor, we're going to use red for VCC, which is 5 or 3.3 volts. We're going to use black for ground, or 0 volts. We're going to use yellow for the echo pin, and white for the trigger pin. The echo pin will be connected to pin 12, while the trigger pin will be connected to pin 11. Next, let's look at the code. Okay, so first we have include servo.h, which imports the servo library. Next we have the declaration of three integers, the first being trigger pin on 11, echo pin on 12, and the motor signal pin on 9. So this just tells the program where your pins, which pins you're using. Then we declare an integer, which is the start angle, so that's the position of the motor when it starts. And then we have the minimum and maximum angle, so what these are are limits of the rotation to stop the motor from spinning at 360 degrees. What we want is for the motor to rotate between the range of 6 and 175 degrees. Next we have an integer which declares the degrees per cycle, so that's how fast the motor will rotate. We instantiate the servo class in the motor library as motor. Next, in the setup loop, we set the two pins as an outputs and inputs, such as trigger pin as an output and the echo pin as an input, and we attach the motor signal pin to the motor. This is a function within the servo class itself. And we then begin the serial communications at a baud rate of 9600. In the main loop, we pass the start angle to be the current angle, and we also pass the speed, which is degrees per cycle, to the motor rotate amount. We then write the current angle to the motor, which moves the motor to the position of the current angle, and then we delay for 10 milliseconds. The next function has a function within it, so the function serial output sends the angle and the calculated distance, which is another function I've declared below, over serial communications, but I'll show you that in a minute. So after that function is run, the current angle is then updated for the next cycle, and if the angle has reached the limits, the minimum or maximum, it is inverted and changes direction. So now we have the calculate distance function. So what this does is it triggers the pin high for 10 microseconds and then triggers the pin low, the trigger pin. It then uses the pulse in function to record the duration taken for the echo pin to return high. Finally, it converts the, dis the duration to a, f a distance using a constant and then returns the distance as an integer back into the other functions. So you can see here as it's called calculate distance but it returns it back through serial output along with the current angle. So the serial output function takes the integer of the angle and the integer, integer of the distance, converts them both to strings and sends them along with a comma through the serial communications to whatever device is listening. So that's string angle plus a comma plus a string of the distance. Now in order to get the radar output graphic representation we're going to have to download a file called processing. So I'm using processing 3 IDE and I'm using it on a Mac so I downloaded this IDE and you can use my file which is in the link in the description below. 
So what this is, is a Java file. Um, so I'll run through the script quickly. Uh, I won't run through it at all, I'll just give you a quick overview on what's happening. So initially you're importing um, the serial library, the key event library and the exception library. You're going to instantiate a port and then declare a font, the angle and the distance and then in the setup loop you're setting up uh, the image itself, that's the dimension, so if you want to vary the dimensions of the image you change those two, those two numbers there. Now this part is the important part, uh, so this name here of the port, this needs to match the port name for your Arduino, so you'll get that by going in the Arduino IDE and going to tools and looking at the port. You have to also make sure that the baud rate matches uh, the serial comms that we opened in the Arduino script. Okay, so once that's matching, what the script here does, it clears the port, it looks for the carriage return or new line, and then it also um, imports a font, loads of font. There's a function then to draw, which draws the outline of the radar, or the outline of the box, should I say. Uh, this also draws, this function includes draw radar, draw line, draw object, draw text. Then you have the event, which is triggered by new information being passed from the Arduino through the USB port. And what that does is it reads it in um, and separates it by the comma. So it, it declares two variables out of a string, one long string that's been sent, and separates it into angle and distance. And then converts them back to integers using a string to int function that's below. Then next is a draw radar function. And what this does is it draws the outline of the radar, the arc lines, and the angle lines. You can have a play around to see the effect it has on it. Okay, so then after that, we have the draw object function. So what this does, it actually draws the object on the, uh, on the graphic. And then we have the draw line function, followed by the draw text function. And finally, we have the function which converts the string to an integer. Uh, and that's a nice overview over that. Once you're finished changing the port name, you can hit play and you should see the graphic begin. So here's a nice demonstration of the project. This video has been brought to you by Mishmash Labs. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, please hit the subscribe button or the like button below. The links are in the descriptions for the code, the 3D printed part. Thanks for watching.